So I will talk about the Antarctic today, but uh, to be honest, I wasn't there. But uh, I will tell all the details about this project as well. And actually, there is a little bit stressing uh, to talk to you, to the professionals, and uh, on not my native language. But this year I had a really nice experience talking to another audience. It was the children in the school. And it was even more stressful for me to speak to the children because I didn't know what to say to them. <laughs> and uh, today I'd like to share with you uh, some of our experience, um, some success that, of course, uh, that we did some things during these two years, previous two years, and to talk about the future of uh, our project and the VR and 360 technologies. So, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to mention that uh, this is not uh, mine. Uh, this is not me only working in Airpan, and uh, all we do, we do with our team. And uh, this year, we hired one girl, the first girl <laughs> in our men's team. This is, her name is Varvara, and you might see here is Sergey, uh, our photographer, Sergey, our programmer, the Oleg, the founder of Airpan, Stas. This man that I want to bring here, and Ivan and Sergey. So half of the team is Sergey's. <laughs> yes. Okay. Here is better. Now it's better. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so during the 2014 and 15 uh, half of the 14 years, uh, there was uh, a lot of clients and customers and partners and the projects we we did. It's not only about the uh, shooting 360, but also a lot of things related to the photography and to 360 technologies. Uh, some of them online, some of them offline. But the first thing I wanted to share with you is a surprise that we got recently from uh, Facebook, <laughs> from Mark Zuckerberg. And uh, when we saw our video on his presentation, uh, I was really, really surprised because uh, a couple of weeks before this uh, eight, uh, F8 uh, conference, uh, there was just unknown agency called me and said, hi, Sergey, we, have a, we, we saw a very nice 360 video on your website. Could you license it to us for a one-time presentation? I said, okay, no problem. Take it. <laughs> and we signed the contract and then we uh, now, when you think about virtual reality, you know, a lot of people first think about it. Okay. Think. But I actually think that video is going to be even more engaging in a lot of ways. This is quite important words. So that these are, are spherical videos. Um, you can move around within it and you can change your viewing angle. And that's possible because the videos are, are filmed on up to 24 different cameras. Six at once. cameras, sorry, Mark. <laughs> now, this is a new and much more immersive type of content. It's not something that you just consume passively. You're actually interacting with it, and you feel like you're there. So soon, we're going to start supporting spherical videos and newsfeed. Uh, people already watch more than 3 billion videos a day in newsfeed, and it's some of the most engaging content in our system. We're going to bring spherical videos to op So this is a very important work. Because uh, we were surprised to see our video without our logo, but it was a part of the contract, so no problems uh, to for the mark. <laughs> uh, but these words are quite important, and we need to pay attention to them, that the 360 video and the photography are now on trend, and uh, it is demanded by the big corporations, and uh, it is still uh, the lack of the content they want to, so to use and to show on their devices. So uh, I will try to speak faster because uh, there are a lot of interesting projects and uh, I will talk about them <coughs> quickly, shortly, uh, to come to the Antarctic Video Project. So we work very close uh, these years with a couple of years with the Apple and uh, as far as you may know, we got developed the travel book uh, application and it was very nice performed and it was the best application of July in many, many countries and it was supported by the Apple, and these guys are really, really good. Uh, the Moscow, the Russian office of uh, Apple is really nice, and they do uh, support uh, 
the team who do the 360 projects and nice applications. So we were featured in their uh, their official video. Just two seconds of fame. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. Uh, but still, we also are very nice exposed now in uh, and every Apple store in, around the world. It is uh, pre-installed our application on the iPad, the iPad Mini and the iPad uh, Big One. So here we are, and we are we were one of the three applications in the travel section that uh, were presented by officially uh, on Apple conference. And we work uh, with the Google as well, so we uploaded some 360 panoramas on uh, views, Google views, and got already three million and uh, three and a half million views. Uh, we also have the license contracts with the Microsoft. They're really, really tricky guys, so please read the contracts with the Microsoft very, very carefully. <laughs> because first time they sent the contract to us, it was written that the they want to license from us uh, the panoramas for a Bing project, uh, for a big search, uh, search engine. And uh, the next version of the contract, that they told us we changed some couple of words. It was written that <laughs> they allowed us to, to take all our contents for everything, for a t-shirt, for any application they want to do, <laughs> whatever. So then we had to get back to the previous versions. And last year um, on the conference, um, they were shown a photo things project, and we, me and my team, we liked this uh, kind of uh, playing stuff uh, really, really much. And we already got uh, 15,000 views. It is not very popular, but still, uh, it, it is not many people uh, in the photo things project, but uh, really, it's good. And we are doing the application for Samsung and the uh, Google uh, headset. And this is the second application that we want to do on the commercial basis. And it could be designed like a travel, virtual traveling uh, to different places so you could buy the ticket or the group of tickets or online uh, oh, unlimited access uh, to the panoramas and the visitors, uh, the owners of the application could uh, travel with the Aeropano and uh, download uh, the devices so our panoramas, and of course, they can be virtual reality compatibility. And we also did the application for a smart TV. Uh, so, on the Samsung uh, TVs, you could also watch our panoramas. And it was a small project, interesting that uh, for us, non commercial, but we are exposed in each and every airport in Russia. and. Staying in the queues, uh, you could already virtually travel and fly around the world. It's some small piece of fame. <laughs> and of course, I'm really, really glad to present the Air Pana book. That uh, there was a just an initiative, uh, and uh, one of um, Russian publishers. Uh, invited us and asked us to, to provide some images to make the commercial book. And it took us a lot of efforts to do at the end this book. And don't be uh, don't be too stupid to to agree to all the conditions of the publishers. <laughs> they want uh, at the end too much. And uh, now we work with the Brookman agency in Germany, and they want. Uh, they will do the, the copy of this book in German and then no in English or not with the help of Matthias help other here. So thank you Matthias. And of course yeah this is the <laughs> the first copies that we got from agency uh, from the publisher where we did the celebration in the sauna with all our men's team. <laughs> At your office? Yes, <laughs> because all the meetings we do in the sauna, actually, because we do not have an official office, we work remotely from our homes, and do collect to make some important and strategic decisions in sauna. And we also got the, the, the contract with the GEO, and we did the GEO calendar uh, 2014, and uh, it's going to be 2016. Uh, the small calendar, like, this. <laughs> uh, it was really 
funny. And we also work closely now with the Nikon Russia. And you might notice the Nikon logo on our website. They provided us uh, four cameras, the 810 and the 10 and 16 millimeters lens. Uh, it was very kind of Nikon to do this. And the same with the Sony. Uh, Sony contacted us and uh, presented us um, cameras i7R and i7 II. And by the way, uh, this a7 II camera is very good for night shots. And it allows us, it, it has the several uh, axis uh, stabilization, five axis stabilization. And we launched it with the helium balloon to the stratosphere uh, above the Moscow. And uh, it did perform very good in, uh, with the one tenth second with the ISO 2500. And we did sharp and crispy night shots. <laughs> and as you know, this uh, spring there was something strange. There was a very, very bright uh, aurora uh, of a lot of cities, uh, not even in the polar uh, regions. And it was a kind of uh, to the right uh, aurora lights, the northern lights, uh, closer to Moscow. And so there was a question in uh, what format do we shoot? And uh, usually our fun uh, content has the, the following um, dimensions. We, we shoot the stills, uh, the photo panoramas 360 by 180 with uh, no blind spots, uh, with no scenes, of course, with the 18,000 pixels or a little bit more. It, uh, the 36 megapixels uh, sensors allow us to do this uh, with the two rows. Uh, one for the sky and one for the land. And we do provide the video with uh, 360 by 180, game with no blind spots, where, and we do stitching uh, with a resolution 5,600 pixels. But we do downscale um, for the devices, usually. And another project we did this year, it is a panoramic cinema. It uh, was the first version. 0.1, I call it, for the big event in Russia. It was a Russian Geographical Society Festival. There was uh, a lot of people coming there. And we did uh, the panoramic cinema with our own uh, efforts, without no budget. We brought there uh, three projectors, uh, three desktops uh, from our houses, <laughs> from our homes, uh, with the Wi-Fi. And we just uh, rented the three projectors, actually. And we did the Carapano programming. Andrei Sudarchikov uh, is the, our team member. He did the programming and uh, we did one um, computer as a host and three are slaves. And we run uh, on three computers, uh, three browsers uh, under Kerpano and it allows us to show separate videos and uh, synchronize them. It's really nice for us. And uh, I hope we already have uh, the second version, and I hope we'll present it in the next for 2015 in Milan on the Russian stand in September. And uh, actually, uh, that is the, the main topic that I wanted to present today. It is Antarctic and uh, a little bit Indonesia, because I like this project very much uh, project. So, but at the beginning, I want to say that in, in actually in Arapano, we have a big problem, is that we already shot more than 250 places around the world, and uh, there's not that much places left. <laughs> so it is a big problem for us to pick up the next destination to go and to shoot. Uh, the only thing is that now we could repeat some shooting with a 360 video, rather than further that we already done. And one of these destinations is exactly Antarctic, because uh, it is not the kind of a trip that once could uh, do like, okay, I decide to go to Antarctica, jump in on the vessel, on the ship, and go there. No, uh, usually it takes a lot of time to, to order uh, the trip, tour there. And uh, for some touristic uh, destinations, it is, uh, might be easier. But if you want to do the photography, where you could uh, take off from the, from the vessel the shores uh, on the right time, on the sunrise or sunsets, it is very difficult to catch uh, such a group. Uh, we were lucky 
and uh, Oleg Banyuk, the founder of Airbana, he decided that uh, it is uh, it, it worth it. So we he wants to spend this huge, I would say, budget for a shooting. And there was actually a, the beginning. Uh, the, the preparation began uh, two years before the, uh, the actually the trip. And uh, of course, uh, when uh, Oleg did the prepayment, it was almost uh, uh, unrefundable. Uh, <laughs> His hand was shaking actually because we spent more than three, thirty, I think, thousand dollars to go there, and not counting the equipment and all this stuff. So of course, we decided to make some uh, tests prior to going to this place uh, with more or less the same conditions. And uh, we sent the group to Greenland uh, to, do, to do some tests uh, flying over the uh, icebergs and trying to catch uh, the whales and animals in, uh, in, in the sea. And there was no success. So we lost two uh, drones with, uh, with the cameras, uh, one with the DSLR camera and another with the 360 video setup. It was uh, once because of the two, um, because of the fog that left the wet uh, the spots of water on the engines uh, of the copter and it just fell down in the water. And the second, we were hunting, photo hunting for the wells, and we flew, I think, one kilometer and a half uh, away from the boat, and the drone uh, tried to re come back to the place where we started. But we were fly, uh, we were uh, swimming uh, and following the wheel. <laughs> Came back to another spot and we didn't see the drone because it was very uh, close to the water. And uh, one kilometer away, you would not see this uh, small piece of uh, equipment. <laughs> so <laughs> it landed somewhere in the waters of Greenland. And then uh, four months before the trip, we actually uh, started from the scratch. And then we decided to, to develop a new kind of uh, of the helicopter. Uh, before, it's in the corner where you had a hexacopter, the three-rotor camera, uh, the three-rotor uh, helicopter drone. And then we did uh, the bigger one. You may see in the hand of the stars. It is uh, look like a quadricopter, but it's a octocopter with uh, eight rotors and uh, with the two batteries in, in it, and it carries a uh, heavy DSLR or the fully stabilized rig for 360 video, and it deployed 25 minutes, compared to 10 minutes uh, flying with a small one. And of course, it allows us to fly very high at uh, 1,000 meters uh, altitude. It could be even more, but uh, we didn't test, didn't uh, do not know. This is, by the way, how it looks uh, uh, 360 video rig that we have and it is uh, fully stabilized at the end so we got a shaky image uh, on our cameras so and when they actually the trip began uh, it was a really really long flight from Moscow to Barcelona then to Buenos Aires and then to Ushuaia uh, the place where the ship the vessels uh, started to starting trip to Antarctica. And of course, the luggage was lost. <laughs> but uh, we are really experienced travelers and we knew about such things could happen. And uh, Stanislav went uh, three days before the ship starting uh, to Antarctica. So there was three days to find the luggage and everything was very good. Uh, we got two luggage, uh, two suitcases that we usually travel with. And we usually bring the two, uh, duplicate uh, all the equipment we have. So we have two suitcases, uh, they are all more or less uh, mirroring each other uh, with the drones inside, one drone in one, one uh, the second in another, and the batteries and the DSLR cameras, uh, two or three or four, depending on the project we have. And of course, uh, three setups of uh, four 360 video. And it was a Russian vessel. Uh, by chance, uh, we were lucky, and Russian crew, Russian language crew, so they allowed us to do anything on the ship uh, wherever we wanted. <laughs> it was 
fully green light uh, to go to any place to shoot the 360 video with the pole, with the tripod, uh, to fly from any part of the vessel, uh, unless it is uh, unsecure for other team members or to the crew. So. But there was, they were registered in Australia, so at the beginning they were thought that it was Australian team, but no. And uh, for you to understand that it was a format of photo exhibition, uh, expedition, sorry. Uh, so there was uh, another photographer on board, and they were animalists. So all the team, all the, uh, the group of photographers were headed by uh, Guy, who is responsible for everything that is done by the photographers on board. And there was a lot of restrictions and rules and regulations that the photographers and the photography team members should follow. Uh, one of the ridiculous is that they have, it's not a ridiculous, yeah, of course, uh, there is a reason under each rule, but they have not bring anything on, uh, on shore, on, uh, on land, and they have to, uh, to clean their clothes with a vacuum cleaner uh, before and after coming and uh, going out from the vessel on land. And of course, you couldn't come to the animal's clothes unless the animal will come to you. And you cannot uh, stay at night there. You cannot come closer to the nests of the penguins. And uh, it's easy to say what you can do rather than list of what you cannot. Oh, I did nothing. Yeah, this is nothing. I hope it will be well, okay. Uh, I will talk in a minute while. Well, actually, there is a the thing that uh, um, um, people people usually imagine when you come to Antarctic that it is a kind of a winter expedition when uh, a lot of uh, So uh, you, you usually imagine that the, the group of the tourists or the, the photographers are traveling through the, um, through the snow with the skis, uh, with everything, but no. It is uh, the regular uh, photo trip and the cruise liner or cruise uh, ship when you live in the, your own uh, apartments, let's say, in your cabin, and uh, the crew invites you to, to go for a shooting, and uh, the temperature was uh, zero Celsius, so it was <laughs> absolutely not cold. The only problem was for the drone, it is a strong and unpredictable wind. The weather change uh, depending on the, on the wind. So you could go to the, um, to the land, and then uh, suddenly in uh, half an hour come the cold wind, and it's gonna be minus five or minus uh, seven but uh, really, really windy. So it would be usually more, more cold than you, you could imagine. And uh, so this is uh, more or less all the details, and now I'm offered to you to, to, to look at the video that our guys are shooting, a combination of 360 video uh, from, from on board, uh, from the pole. And by the way, as you may notice, uh, I uh, write down uh, what equipment we use for shooting each uh, content. And here we use the not only Ninja Poles uh, and the Freedom 360 for online stills and uh, our own drone and the, uh, the gimbal for 360 aerial video. So I will keep silent. And no sound. Half of the yes. The problem for this trip, by the way, was that you couldn't bring uh, two more people or assistants there. Uh, Stanislav, so it will work right. Uh -huh. uh, Stanislav, the pilot, had to work uh, himself. 
almost all the time. actually to come to this place and to do the good shootings is the one thing and to let's say post process all the materials that they bring uh, it's absolutely another and uh, not uh, even longer uh, thing uh, to do and for the project of uh, Antarctic we decided to develop um, some kind of uh, a little bit another website uh, with a combination of uh, 360 virtual tour in it with the still panoramas, with the photo panoramas then we also included a 360 video uh, very well translated story telling uh, some interesting and funny details from the trip and uh, the regular video and the gallery so usually a lot of editors actually complaining on the design of the main air panel page sorry about this but uh, yeah, it's not many people working in Airbun, and we do develop another design, but for uh, Antarctic 360, we did a special thing. And usually it takes us uh, about a week to stitch uh, the whole panoramas for one virtual tour with uh, 25 uh, panoramas in it. And, uh, one, uh, two guys is involved in this, and also a couple of days for programming. Uh, there's also one guy is involved in this, and uh, for doing 360 video, it takes us uh, 
much longer, there is uh, three weeks at least, to do the final cut, the say director's cut, uh, and to combine all the, uh, the pieces, the, all the parts, in an interesting way. And we usually do not do the parts uh, shorter than the 15 or 20 seconds because uh, the viewers uh, couldn't uh, understand what that is 360 video and they have to have a time to turn on the head to look to zoom in to some interesting parts. So it is also taken, we take it into account when doing the video. And uh, go ahead, you could. Uh, look at the, uh, read the detailed story and look at the material that we got on our website. And we did only the first part and we will um, publish uh, in next half a year another part, the second part of this script. And another project that I wanted actually to share with you, uh, it didn't plan, I didn't plan to do this, but uh, our guys uh, just come back from, uh, from Indonesia and it was another far away destination and you may see this is Wayaga Island there it is really really far away from from where we now here you may see on the Google Earth uh, so that is the consequences of the problem we have uh, so we have to travel to the destinations that uh, normal people normal tourists couldn't reach uh, because you have to to fly very far away and then rent a boat or the ship or the yacht uh, to, to, to get to these places and uh, they are inhabitants so there is nobody in there, there is no hotels on, on, on shore on islands and I really really like the landscape of this, it is exotic as, uh, and romantic I would say so here is the, how the panoramas look like it is unpublished yet. This week, uh, we're going to publish this virtual tour with the 13 panoramas. And there are some other uh, nice shootings from Indonesia, from Bromo Vulcano. And uh, they would catch a very nice light. And then here, the guys, uh, from day to day, the, the weather was really, really different. You may see on the horizon, where here is uh, the, the showers, the the rain coming. Is this shot with the rig? Uh, from the drone? Yeah. Yeah, with the DSLR cameras. So, so we have... have one more, uh, six cameras or no, 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 it's uh, one camera that is moving on the moving gimbal, pre-programmed uh, gimbal that uh, shoots the several shots. And how do you do the zenith? Uh, in the sky? Yeah. We usually shoot the sky separately. Yeah. And uh, here is the very nice place, lagoon with the boat. And uh, because of the new helicopter, the new drone, we could go very, very high. And here is about the uh, one kilometer altitude. It's about the the clouds. And you could hardly find the boat where we they were flying from. Here it is. And wow. uh, it's excellent place. <laughs> Ready? But now the, the back side of this story. Uh, it is uh, not that sexy as it might appear on the first uh, clips. Here is the stars, uh, our pilot, and they come to the islands and they have to travel for four or five days on this boat. Not that on the foreground <laughs> yacht, but this blue one. <laughs> and it, this is how it looks inside. So all the suitcase, everything, uh, the food for three days, uh, for four days, uh, you have to bring with uh, themselves. And they had traveled there one day, uh, just swimming, uh, coming through the, the, the sea to the Wayag Islands and there was a rain of course there and they had uh, to bring all the equipment their hands themselves uh, of course with the help of some crew the team of assistants but their all few cases I just were dropped on the sand and here is how the camp with the tent looked like and this is how they spent their evenings and 
of course, we had to bring the, the power uh, engines uh, to get the electricity to charge the batteries. And uh, of course, uh, as we always do, we double all the equipment and we ask um, the assistants to bring the two electricity stations because uh, after a very hard rain in one night, uh, they lost one of them that was broken and uh, otherwise uh, they couldn't charge the batteries for flight. So the two uh, pieces, uh, two items of uh, equipment is essentially needed for such trips. And this is how they start uh, stitching the previews. <laughs> and it was a very nice image uh, of the night camp. And after this image is done, they were covered by the water, by the very, very strong showers, the tropical rain. And they have to, to drive. And the local fauna, the local animals, were keep, on, keep an eye on them. This is how our shooting team Look, it is uh, Sergei Shandin to the left and Stanislav Sidov. And uh, if you think that it was so romantic and sexy to fly from the boat, it is not. So you have to balance on the boat, uh, taking in the hand $10,000 uh, or $20,000 helicopter with all the equipment in your hand, not falling down in the water. So really. And uh, now we have a really bigger helicopter than we had. It is a bit difficult to launch it from the hand. So, yeah, this is what I wanted to tell. Do you have any questions? Sergey, uh, thank you very much again for a, a fantastic presentation. And uh, I just wanted to ask, going back to your night shooting for the Nini Blues, which I thought was very impressive, how do you decide beforehand what you're going to expose that type of shot? Sorry? How do you, how do you, how do you choose your exposure for that type of thing? Is it automatic or for the night no, shot? No, uh, we did the test. Uh, we just tried to figure out on land uh, what the exposure should be. And we did uh, uh, the bracketing with the one and a half uh, step uh, distance between shots. And so the camera was shooting all the time, and the balloon was rotating all the time. So the camera was shooting around it um, all the time, doing like one tenth of second, one sixty second, and one uh, five second. Let's say one fifth second. So all the time, shoot, 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 and then. We've got, I don't know, 700, I think, shots, and have to find the right for one panorama. <laughs> and of course, half of them were not uh, sharp at all. But uh, as you may see, several of, uh, uh, of shots for, for each panorama, they were crispy. Look, question over there. Yeah, um, I have a question regarding your, like, the financial situation of all your students all the big journeys you are doing, uh, how do you earn like, all the money for doing such journeys? And is this all by licensing? Uh, it's <laughs> uh, the question uh, which I face all the conference, yeah. <laughs> every conference. <laughs> well, uh, at the beginning, the project was supported by the team members. So most of all, there was all the costs were covered by Oleg, because he was the founder. The, uh, the idea of the project was uh, realized by him and the team, of course. And uh, now, of course, we got the great support from the uh, application that we've developed and some licenses that we, sh uh, we sell to the big companies. And we also do the commercial shootings uh, in Russia and abroad. If uh, the clients have, for example, we shoot in the marina with the yachts in Montenegro, they invited us and they, these guys have the budgets, of course. And we also do the commercial uh, the stitching so if you need to stitch, for example, your 360 video and do the software stabilization, uh, we could also do this. Because uh, the video that uh, you see uh, on Mark Zuckerberg's uh, presentation, it was shot uh, without any stabilization at the time. So we did the software. So that is the answer.
Well, thank you, Sergei. I told you that you would see great images. So the, our next step is the Google party at seven o'clock. So you already have a yes. <laughs>